Hey guys, Sophia here from my great challenge. Welcome back to my channel. I'm going to film this afternoon. It's Sunday. I didn't do anything yesterday. Um, but before I do that, um, and that's going to be in another video, because I want to do, I want to finish my dresser and then I want to do the staircase. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about what's going on in the country right now because I know that a lot of you are asking me for updates and you want to know what's going on with me and then some of you are in different countries and not in as populated areas as I am here in the US and you may not be as affected uh, even though we're all going to be affected at some point so I just want to give you an update because you also want to know what's going on with mom okay so we all know what's going on with the virus and everything um, France, as of now, in case you didn't know, has established a partial shutdown, meaning that all restaurant bars, um, cafes, museums, schools, and other places of public gathering that are indoors are on shutdown. You can go. All right. The only things that are still open are the tobacco places, of course, because you know the French, they have to smoke. Okay. You can't take that away from the French. They have to smoke. Uh, so tobacco sellers are open and supermarkets are open and pharmacies are open. That's it. And they've asked people to do what we are now referring to as social distancing. And if you want a good article to read, I'm putting in the link down below. It shows you in graph, animated graphs, what social distancing does and why it is so important to put into effect now. Not next week, not Wednesday, now, <laughs> okay? Um, French are not practicing social distancing. They really are not. Uh, there's people in the parks, they're hanging out, they did the partial lockdown, but they allowed people to go vote, which is ridiculous because if you think about it, everybody's going to contest the result of this election um, because the absentee rate is going to be humongous. A lot of people, mom didn't go, a lot of people didn't go vote. And uh, some people are going to say, well, this is not a valid election because 35% of the population decided to rightfully so self-isolate. So we're not going to count that. So it was ridiculous to leave the voting booths open for the election. It really was a, a bad move on the part of the French government. I don't know what they were thinking with that one, other than the self-interest. Um, so there's a lot of people that are still going out and, and that's just like, it's got to stop because the numbers in France are skyrocketing and are now following the same curve upward than the numbers in Italy. And if you are not familiar with what's going on in Italy, they are in full imposed quarantine. The police is going in the streets with the megaphone telling people to stay home. They are staying home. They're not going out at all. They're showing some amazing um, behavior. If you watch videos on Twitter, on YouTube, they're singing on balconies. One guy with an accordion, the whole building is singing with him. I think it's phenomenal how they're coming together uh, in this time of crisis. However, the numbers are not going down. They really are not. Um, they're going by the thousands of new cases on a daily basis and on average 300 or so deaths on a daily basis. And they're over 21,000 cases right now. And France is following that curve and they are not self-isolating. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about New Jersey and New York because these are the two areas that I'm concerned the most. New Jersey because I live here, New York because it's next door and there's a lot of commute between the two states. So basically in New York right now we had about 600 plus cases. Um, the death rate is low. It's still one is too many but you know what I mean. Um, and they're not shutting down the schools. And they're not shutting down the schools for valid reasons. They're very concerned with the low-income families who rely on the school breakfast and lunches every day. But if you get federal funding, there's ways about it. Like you can distribute the food or you can have the kids go and pick up the food uh, while you go pick up the food for your kid. There's a, there's a lot of ways of remediating that problem. But they're not shutting down the schools. They're doing a, um, a scaled-down occupancy in major places of gathering so if they have a restaurant for instance with 50 seats they stop the gathering at 25 seats they're doing a 50 percent decrease 
they're trying to do a, a variation of social distancing that in my opinion and really again these are just my opinions is not effective if you look at the article i'm posting down below um, from the Washington Post, social distancing, the real kind, where everybody stays home, is really the only way to slow down the spread. But it's for the other folks, all right? So let's talk about these other folks, for instance. Well, of course, we have all of the medical personnel, uh, all of the first responders, all of the um, folks who have to be at there, who we need for our infrastructure and for life to continue, the people who transport your food, the people who transport your medicine, um, things like these folks, all right? The, these folks and people like me who have to be in the field and take care of patients out in the community. We have no choice but to go out. And I want you to understand this, that if you don't stay home when you can and you can afford it, or if you're told to stay home and you don't stay home, you're not just putting yourself at risk. You're putting everybody who has to be at there at risk as well. You're putting me at risk, my colleagues at risk. You're putting my patients at risk. Social distancing means that you stay home. You don't go out to your friends. You don't go hang out. You don't go to the park. I see a lot of people whose kids are out of school right now and they're taking their kids to the playground. That's not a good idea. <laughs> that's not distancing it's not a holiday this is to be taken very seriously and I'm seeing a lot of people who are not taking it seriously so New York City right now is not closing its school it's a big mistake <laughs> I'm just like I will go on the record saying that it's a big mistake they should close the schools um, and they still are partially up and I know that all the Broadway shows are closing major stores are closing um, Nike Apple um, Urban Outfitters you know big big stores are closed and other stores will close eventually but I think that the majority of the businesses are waiting for mandatory closure and I get it economically a lot of mom-and-pop stores can't afford to shut down right now they rely on the customers to come in to survive uh, I have to have faith that there will be a stimulus package attached at the tail end of this crisis to assist all of the businesses that had no other choice but to close down. All of the ones that are being told on a mandatory basis that they have to close down all those who elect to close down for the purpose of social distancing and um, self-quarantining. So that's what's going on in New York right now. Um, we used to live in Fort Lee, which is right across from the George W. Bridge, uh, the, the George Washington Bridge. Um, and there's a town over Fort Lee that's called Teaneck. Teaneck is in self-quarantine, the entire town, because they have, I think, 21 cases. And that 21 cases is being traced back to one individual who was going back and forth between New York and his residence. And he went to a lot of public gathering. Um, I believe they were of religious uh, purposes. And he just spread the virus to everybody. And then those everybody spread the virus to other people. So Teaneck right now is one of the major towns in New Jersey that has um, the virus. Now, in that's Bergen County. And Bergen County, I think, has the highest number as a result. Um, I'm getting a lot of work text. Hold on. Um, so that's what's going on. That's for Bergen County. Now, I live in Essex County. We have four cases in Montclair, which is one town over for me, uh, for what we know. And I'm not pointing fingers. I'm just giving you an idea of how things spread. Uh, for what we know, there was one lady who had it. We don't know how she got it. But she went to the YMCA and used the equipment there and went to yoga classes and other people went to the YMCA and that's how it spread. See? Social distancing. Um, we have none in our town. The county where I work is Hudson County and that one is starting to have a higher number. We got six more I think today. We might be at nine um, right now. 
There's three in Jersey City where my office is. And then there's one in West New York, a couple in Hoboken. Um, so it's here. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's here. And it's scary. A lot of people are saying, well, don't panic. Well, you have to. I'm not saying like panic, crazy panic. But you have to take this very seriously. Um, a lot of stores are making adjustments. Um, yesterday I went to... Trader Joe's because uh, we needed some stuff from there um, and the Trader Joe is closing early in order to clean out the restaurant and actually we went there right before closing we actually watched them take all of the packages of meat the packages of chicken of you know whatever and they carted them off to the back of the store I'm assuming they're going to sanitize those but they were taking down all the shelving and cleaning everything so they were really really doing uh, due diligence with regards to the spread of the virus I don't know if that's enough I know that I've observed everybody wiping the cart handle uh, on their way in and um, I think that's a good thing. I'm seeing more and more people wearing masks. I don't know if it's really effective because they said that it's only the sick people who should wear masks, but I have a feeling that pretty much everybody's going to start wearing masks at this point. So that's what's going on uh, in New Jersey. The schools for Edward and Willie are closed. They are moving to e-learning um, as of Wednesday. So they give them half of Friday, Monday and Tuesday as days off and then uh, starting Wednesday they have a rigorous schedule of classes that are going to be via their uh, Chromebooks or you know Google documents and all of that they're gonna have um, FaceTime with the teachers working from home I think it's wonderful and I can see where eventually people are gonna find that more beneficial and that may be the new direction, don't touch your face. That may be the new direction um, the school system is going. I would not be opposed to that. Um, I personally always like the idea of homeschooling, but I gotta go to work, so not happening in this house. But I can see where this is gonna change a lot of things and the way we do a lot of things in the country. So as of Monday, all of the schools in New Jersey will be uh, closed. Um, and there's some talk of canceling the whole semester where schools will be closed until the end of the school year, which is somewhere around June 19th. Um, I anticipate that that's probably true. That might happen because uh, I don't know how it's not like this virus is just going to drop off the face of the earth and stop. There's going to continue to be some um, it will slow down, but there will continue to be issues with it. And I think that they'll try to avoid having a new curve up. Uh, universities are closed. So Princeton is closed and all of their dorms have been emptied. They're providing uh, accommodations for foreign students uh, to be able to um, either go home before all the travel is shut down or if they can go home house them somewhere else but the school is closed Rutgers University all of those universities are pretty much either shut down already or about to this curfews in certain towns which I find I mean it's a form of social distancing but I just don't know how a curfew is really going to help for instance Jersey City and Hoboken have a curfew right now of 10 p.m. so you can go to bars or restaurant after 10 p.m. and understand this is the East Coast people go out very late you know I we don't eat dinner at 5 p.m. in this area most people eat the dinner at 8 or 9 p.m. kids included um, so they're doing a curfew at 10 p.m. it's not like the virus is going to say oh it's 9 45 I better uh, take care of this now because in 15 minutes I can't spread you know what I mean so but it's kind of reducing the amount of people that are going up. But I'm seeing less and less people in the street. Um, there's less and less cars. Traffic is easier on the way to work instead of a good hour with on the worst days of traffic. It takes about 30 minutes, 25 minutes. So obviously traffic has been reduced by close to 50%, which is a good thing, I'm not complaining. But that's what's going on right now in New Jersey. So 
I really don't know what direction the state is going to take. Um, I anticipate, of course, that it's going to get worse and that there would probably be a lockdown and some kind of, if not full, partial quarantine in the state of New Jersey. New York, I don't know how they will shut down the city. Though we managed for September 11, we shut down for a whole week and we were fine. So they may have to do that. So that's what's going on. Now, let's talk about France and mom. Um, as you know from the last talk that I had with you guys, um, f my mom and my sister self-quarantined about two weeks ago. And by quarantine, you know, quarantine, quarantine 40, number 40. A quarantine is really for 40 days, not 14. It's 40 days. They have everything they need for 40 days. Um, but now that France is canceling out most of the activities and asking people to stay home, even though it's not enforced, it's partial quarantine. Mom and my sister are not visiting each other. They're staying in their um, respective apartments. They have enough food, they Skype, uh, and they talk over the phone. And mom says she's fine. And my sister says she's fine. Um, we're using WhatsApp and all of the other modules to do um, FaceTime. And uh, that's what's going on. So it's really, really scary. Um, a lot of people take it not too seriously. And I don't understand why. Because if you look at the numbers going on in Europe right now and us being about two weeks behind, there's no reason to believe that it's not going to be a similar situation here than it is currently over there. If you believe that, I think you need to reevaluate how you feel about this. Uh, I may be wrong, and if I am wrong, then so be it. This video will age very poorly. But if I'm right, you know, I, I want to make sure that everybody is aware of what's going on. Um, there's some undue panic, like don't go to the store and literally empty the shelves of the pasta. Like think about other people. You need to think about the elderly who rely on food stamps uh, to go to the store and they don't have a lot of money to spend. They're already on fixed income. They need to be able to find their needs too. They need to be able to find pasta and pasta sauce and milk and eggs and frozen vegetables and toilet paper and all of those things and soap. If you're healthy and you go to the store and you take everything for yourself, that's not too cool. Like, it's really a selfish move. Don't do that. Not cool. Selfish, inconsiderate, and also dangerous because you're forcing other people not to have the resources. And when people don't find the resources, they will panic. And when panic happens, people do stupid things. Very stupid things when panic strikes. So there's, there's a lot of folks that we need to keep in mind and in our thoughts and our prayers. All the medical personnel that works in hospitals, whether it's nurses, um, assistant nurses, doctors, uh, the virologists, the, all of the folks who operate the x-ray machines because you need the x-ray to be able to see what the lungs look like. Um, all of the janitorial team, the cleaning crew, the uh, uh, your sanitation department people, the police, the EMS, the ambulance, the rescue squad, the firemen, the, uh, um, all of these people we have to keep in our thoughts and prayers because they are going to be mental health field people like me. We have to keep all of these folks in our thoughts and prayers because we are going to be frontline uh, when it comes to this virus and if you could and I'm telling you if you can st and again if you can stay home please do really <laughs> I mean I'm not saying lock down and and be pa I'm not saying lock down and be panic what I'm saying is if you have the opportunity to work at home um, and self quarantine or isolate and socially distance yourself from the rest of the world for the next two or three weeks if you can do that Please do that, because we really don't need this thing to go any worse than it is already. Okay, so um, these were my thoughts and what's going on right now. If you want me to continue to update you, I will. Um, 
the plan at work right now is not much. I gotta be honest. Uh, we're gonna continue to do what we're doing. We're adjusting. We're no longer having people sign on the phones. Uh, so this, we're distancing ourselves. Some patients, we're taking patients temperatures uh, when we go visit. Um, you know, and then there's a whole protocol in place if somebody has a temperature of 100.4 and above. We all have assigned cars now. Well, I already did have a car that I take home. Uh, so nobody gets into my car. So to avoid cross-contamination between employees and patients and cars, everybody has an assigned car and is responsible for the sanitation and the disinfecting of that particular car. And um, we're being diligent at work, wiping, cleaning, spraying, <laughs> doing everything we can. Uh, but it's, uh, it's uh, a very uncertain time for everybody. Um, but hang in there. We're going to go through this. We've been through September 11. We've been through the swine flu. We've been through a lot of really um, unnerving and anxiety-producing events in this country. And we're going to manage the problem that you see in Italy, France, Germany, Spain right now is that their hospital capacity is way above 200%. Um, and that's really why you're seeing an increase in death. They just can't take care of the patients anymore. And the reason why they can't is because they have too many. And why do they have too many? It's because the social distancing happened too late. Think about that. Maybe we need to start doing that. I know people are talking about it, but again, I'm begging you, if you can, socially distance yourself. Do it now. Don't wait. Don't wait for the government to tell you to stay home. If you can, do it now. So um, let me check my uh, texts and emails because it's been ongoing. We have work right now. I'm going to show you how to properly wash hands. <laughs> Why? Why are you doing that? Well, because it's important. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of stuff about uh wash your hands for 20 seconds and sing the happy birthday song twice but you're not showing people how to properly wash hands most people just go like this okay that's not how you wash hands you need to wash your hands like a surgeon washes his or her hands before surgery let's go to my bathroom i'm going to show you how to properly wash hands and then i'll end this video and then i'll start doing something else Whew. Okay, so I'm at my sink in my bathroom. Um, most people, this is what they do when they wash their hands. They get the soap, right? They go under the water and they basically go like this and they sing happy birthday twice, blah, blah, blah. They rinse, close this, and then they go and take their uh, uh, paper towel or whatever, okay? That's not how you wash, <laughs> okay? That is not how you wash your hands. Um, and the reason why I'm doing this, it's gonna sound silly, but it's very important because there's a lot of people who are still not washing hands properly. And the problem with not washing hands properly is that obviously you're not removing all of the bacteria and virus that you have on your hands. There's some areas on your hands where the bacteria and the virus actually likes more than others. And that would be your fingertips, of course. And then all of the areas that are here. And then all of the folds here on your knuckles. So the first thing you need to do is think about it in terms of if you were going to a public bathroom, for instance, and you have to go to the bathroom and you got to wash your hands. Think about how many hundreds and hundreds of people use the faucet before you. Okay, um, most of them will go directly to the faucet and open the faucet or turn it on and then they'll wash their hands. Okay, so by the time they wash their hands, it's all nice and good. Maybe they got rid of 80% of the bacteria, but they still touch the faucet with dirty hands. Think about it. So the first thing you want to do whenever you go to a public bathroom uh, or even at your house is that you have to have a paper towel, tissues next to your... Um, sink and you want to open your faucet using a tissue so you don't contaminate your faucet okay first thing you want to do is wet your hands you wet your hands then you're going to take your soap and here's the trick i'm going to close this all right 
Here's the trick. Most people, like I showed you, just go like this, right? But what you really want to do is not about the amount of time and singing happy birthday twice. There's a lot of areas of your hands that need to be washed. It's the front, it's the top, it's in between, it's all of the uh, knuckles. And then think about it. You want to do also your wrist and above your wrist. So the proper way to wash your hands you're going to go like this, right? Then you want to go like this. You see what I'm doing with my hand? With one hand over the other. That's helping me get the sides of the fingers. Like this. Then you want to go like this. And because you're going here, you're not necessarily doing the thumb part. So then you want to go around your thumb. Okay? I think this is called the Turkish handshake. This is to help you get the tip of your finger. You can also go like this if you need to. Okay, and you want to do your wrists. You don't need to sing happy birthday twice. If you really do this properly and you do all of the parts of your hands that you need, you're getting the time. All right, the 20 second. I'm past that 20 second already. Then you want to do you shake around. Now here's where the big difference is. And that's what doctors do. I'm doing it twice, all right? Okay, you wanna do the articulations, your, your knuckles. This is the only way to get rid of everything. Okay, now that I'm all soaked up, how do you rinse? You don't rinse with your hands down because if you do that, you're bringing all of the bacteria you just washed off. You bring it to your fingertips. You want to rinse with your hands up. I'm using the same um, rag for the demo purposes, but it, obviously you're gonna get something clean. Okay, and then you pat, you don't scrub. Don't rub, pat, okay? And that's how you wash hands properly, okay? These hands are super, super clean. So proper hand washing is super important. If you watch doctor's show, um, I, I never watch any of them, but I think there was one called ER and then house or whatever. I am sure at some point they show you how the doctors wash their hands, where they go and rinse with the water coming from above and they let the soap come out uh, on their um, elbows and stuff. And then you'll notice um, I'm putting cream afterwards because you want to moisturize, all right? The more we wash, the more we open. Um, parts of our hands. You don't see it, it's microscopic, but you want to keep your hands moisturized. Um, you'll see that the nurse aide or the nurse is actually the one putting the gloves on the clean hands of the doctor. He's not putting the gloves himself. She's doing that and it's to avoid new contamination uh, or cross contamination. So anyway, so this was how you properly wash your hands. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because mom gave me a big lecture over the phone today on how to properly wash hands. She's worried about me, um, rightfully so, because of the nature of the work that I do. But it's important, okay? A lot of us, I'm telling you, I see it all the time. People go to the store and uh, uh, they want to use the bathroom and they just don't put your hands on the faucet. You take a paper napkin, always have tissue in your hand or always have tissue in your pocket. Open the faucet, turn it on, but not with your bare hands on it. And then when you turn it off, you do the same thing. You take a tissue and you close the faucet. I believe that we're going to go back to paper towels. Um, oh, that's an important one. Hold on. I believe we're going to go back to paper towels because most of the bathrooms only have the the heat thing, the uh, blow dryer. And that's really not helping stopping cross-contamination and viruses and all of that because the sink still has the possibility 
of having a lot of bacteria on its handles. Um, and since you've eliminated paper towels in bathrooms, people have to open those sinks um, by hand. So the solution was to have the ones that are photosensitive, like they have like a motion detector, those are good. Um, and then they also control the temperature with that. So we're either gonna have to either have not just those with the motion sensor, or if we're gonna have the handles, they gotta have paper towels. Uh, that's something I demand. I demand paper towels back in bathrooms. So anyway, this was my little update. Um, we're doing fine. The kids are looking forward to e-learning. Um, they have a schedule. It's gonna be regimented. It's not gonna be like uh, La La Land, I'll study in two hours, or they have to be checking in on the computer. They have to be in front of the computer and they have work to do in front of the computer. So it's not like they're on holidays or anything or on a reduced schedule. They still have the full curriculum um, to study and work on. Music is going to be interesting, music classes, because they're gonna have to do that as well. I don't know how it's gonna sound on the computer to have each individual on his camera at home in my town playing their instrument with the teacher on the other side doing the, I, I don't know how they're going to do it. It's maybe they're going to move to um, individual lessons. I don't know. But Edward's trip has been canceled. He was supposed to be in Cleveland this week with his band. They were going to do concerts and stuff and visit, um, uh, what's the name of it? The um, Hall of Fame, the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They were going to go to a Cleveland concert, the uh, uh, Severance Hall. Uh, or the Cleveland Philharmonic, one of those. Uh, they were supposed to go to Great Wolf Lodge in Pennsylvania. All of that got canceled. And now that I think of it, if this thing keeps going the way it is, there's a possibility they may cancel his graduation too because he's graduating this year. My classes have been canceled um, for the next three weeks. So I'm going to be available um, they just announced that yesterday at the end of the last class, so I'm going to be available on Saturdays again. I don't know what's going to happen after three weeks, um, and I have to contact the board to find out how they're going to accommodate those of us who have to take classes for recertification, because obviously we're not going to be able to finish our recertification courses on time for the deadline to recertify. Um, they're going to have to extend that, but I guess we'll think about that when we cross that bridge. Anyway, just wanted to give you a little update, chit chat. I'm not in a state of panic. I'm very cautious. Um, we're doing well. We're eating well. We have everything we need. Mom is eating well, doing well. She has everything she needs. Please keep in your thoughts and prayer all of the ones who are currently affected by this, the folks in all of Europe, the folks here in the U.S. who are affected by it, the elderly are the ones we really need to care for. And that's what I meant by don't be selfish when you go to the store and take all the stuff. There's a grandma out there who needs the stuff too. Please, don't be foolish. Leave some stuff for the next guy, all right? I will talk to you later. Um, let me know down below if you want me to do more updates like this. Check out that website from the Washington Post that I put in down below so you can see what it looks like how you stop spreading the virus if you do social distancing. It's very eye-opening. And um, I guess I'll talk to you later. I'm just gonna go ahead and film a cleaning video and that would be it. So thanks for watching you guys. Bye.